put you to Quinway coming to y'all with that basketball analysis on analysisplayground.com and on YouTube. We're going to talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team that was a little disappointed last year, didn't have the playoff run that people expected them to possibly have. But they're coming back this season with new pieces, and they're also going to have some of the returning pieces that already gels and fits well together. And now they're trying to build upon that and have a better regular season where they finished second in their division, and it was only by a game. So they obviously want to improve on that. It's going to be tough because the division got a lot better at the top of it, and they're one of the teams that's at the top of it. But they also want to have the best playoff run that they can have to secure them a spot in the NBA Finals and to get a, a chance to be able to win the NBA championship. So you look at Jared Allen. He was an all-star a couple years ago back in Cleveland, which is kind of fun to remember. He can finish the, in the paint. He can shot block. He can set good screens. He's one of the best rim running centers in the league and has been for a long period of time. You look at the fact that he's only 26, so you got a couple more years of him being your best center and being a guy that's long, lanky, and athletic and really good at clearing space to be able to contest shots too. That's something that you just can't teach. Either you want to do it or you don't. And I feel like Jared Allen been able to show that he wants to be one of the best centers in the league for a long period of time. Injuries held him back last year, even in the playoffs, which was unfortunate because I feel like they had a chance to possibly get to the conference finals if they was fully healthy. But they did have a tough matchup in the first round, which they ended up doing well enough to win it, which is important. Imani Bates is another guy. He grew to 6'8", and he's going to be one of their possibly – corner shooters and top of the key shooters and a guy that can create a shot every once in a while if needed. I feel like that's why they drafted him and gave him a contract in the first place because of his shot creation ability. I know he's not the most efficient guy. I know he's not the best, strongest guy or the fastest guy or has enough size for his even his position. But that's something that development takes care of and you get him on the contract and you keep building him up even in his confidence. You get him familiarity with his teammates and you see what you have when he comes to the age of 23, 24 years old. So if you got a guy like this, this is a hidden gem on his team. He can be that dream small forward that they've been wanting at that position for years and he can grow into that role because he showed a lot of those potential and intangible things in high school and college. Now it's about putting it all together and taking it more serious when now that he's in the NBA and then, you know, putting his thinking cap on how to fit in this team and how to make his own mark on this team positively. And I do really want to see what he can do because I've been a fan of Monty Bates for a while. And people say he's not even going to make it to the NBA based off his first year in college. And I was a guy that said, you know, you got to keep chasing your dreams. You can't give up now. You're almost there. You only need one good season in college to be able to make it to the NBA. And he was able to do that. And now we get to see if he can do that in the NBA. He made it. He played. Now can you do better? Can you continue to challenge yourself to be greater? And I think that that's going to be an important conversation that he's going to have to have with himself and then the work ethic come after that. And then it's about how good can he really be, you know, in the NBA. But his role is undefined for that reason so far on this team. All we can do is see it what he can be in the future for this roster and this team that he's currently on. But he can always leave this team in the future. But it's just about developing his skills right now because this is a young team that's on the rise that has a lot of talent. Darius Garland became an all-star too. And he is now one of the most looked after point guards in the league because he's a solid playmaker. He's a guy that can really handle the ball and break down the defense. He can hit floaters. He can get to the basket and make layups. He can make pull-up mid-ranges and pull-up threes. And he's a guy that knows when to give up the ball and knows when to take over games when it's needed. And I feel like that's a point guard that everybody wants is a guy that knows when to score and knows when to pass and knows when to stay out the way and knows when to be able to play off ball and has a shooting range to be able to do it on both levels of the court. And that's something that Darius Garland does bring to the table. And that's why he's one of the highest commodities every time you look at free agency news or trade news. He's always a guy that seems to be brought up. Um, Ty Jerome, he's a solid player. I don't think 
he's going to be, you know, something crazy for this roster, but I can see him being one of the top eight to nine players on this roster and getting a great role. They need backup guards outside of Karis LeVert, who I'm going to talk about next. But these guys already understand their game. They're not really going to get too much better. They're not going to really do too much different. But Karis LeVert is the perfect backup because he can shoot a little bit. He has confidence to be able to take over games. He has done it his whole career. He has gotten a little older, but they don't really need him to do as much because they do have Donovan Mitchell. But other than that, Karis LeVert understands I'm here, make a couple passes, get a couple rebounds, make some threes, fit in with the offense if I need to be. If somebody goes down, I can step up into that starting role and still make an offensive difference. He's still not the greatest defender, not the greatest playmaker, but he makes what it does. Uh, he make he makes good decisions and he knows when to pick his spots when to score. So that's one thing you give him credit on. But Tyra Jerome not going to get too much playing time because of players like Karis LeVert and obviously Donovan Mitchell will get the bulk of the minutes because he's the best shooting guard that they have on the roster. Um, Sam Miro, I think that he's just a good, solid floor spacer. I think when you kick him the ball, you have some type of confidence that he can knock that shot down and he can get out in transition, just like the Karis LeVert and the Ty Jerome's and the Imani Bates and just finish with layups and some dunks. George Niang was a guy that they definitely wanted to bring back because he definitely is one of the guys that they trust the most to be able to make plays and make shots. So I, I understood why they want to keep him for a little bit longer, even though he's getting a little older. And, you know, this team has had health problems the last couple of years. So you definitely want to have your depth so you can continue to win games when it matter. Craig Porter, I don't really see him getting too much playing time. I don't see him in the rotation. But it's still worth mentioning that he's on this roster. And if somebody does go down, he might get 5 to 12 minutes, sometimes probably 15. Matt Struess is just a gunner. He can get the ball. He can let it go. He can let that thing fly. And it can be a bucket. He, he has been one of the most valuable players on this roster for a long period of time since he's been here. And I feel like they need to keep him because you need guys that can make shots with and without the ball. And he can do that. Um, and that's very important. Tristan Thompson signed a contract for one more year. He's a bruiser. He's going to rebound. He's going to set screens. He's going to finish in the paint. They need somebody to back up Jared Allen when they don't lose too much when he comes on the court. And I feel like Tristan Thompson can play with Jared Allen if they need to go big sometimes because Tristan Thompson is that much of a huge type of player. He's actually bigger than Jared Allen when it comes to strength and weight, and that has been something that they needed um, when it comes to certain teams like the Sixers having a player like Joel B or Denver having a player like Jokic that like to bump you and bang with you. I think Tristan Thomas can do that better than Jared Allen, and it's great to have both of them. JT Thor, he's a guy that gives them floor space and has a big. He can hit shots. He can make plays um, when it comes to defensive things, clearing the last place of shot blocker for test shots. He's not the greatest defender, but he has shown potential that he can do it. He still is a guy that has a lot of upside as that stretch four, and I think that it's good that they like this guy and want to keep him. Um, Jaylon Tyson, not going to play that much, but it's still worth mentioning because he's still one of those guys on a roster that has had a solid resume up until this point. It's just going to take some time for him to figure some things out. And then Dean Wade has just been a guy that they can trust that can come in, make some threes, make some mid-ranges, get out and transition, play some solid defense, and that's what they need him to do. For the most part, he's been able to get that done. That's why they wanted to keep him on the roster. But when you look at this team, you're just looking at their big four, Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, obviously Jared Allen, and uh, guys like Karis LeVert is going to carry this team the most. Evan Mobley is a guy I still want to see what he's going to become offensively. He hasn't really showed me that he can be dominant offensively, he showed me he can be a great defensive player, which he has already become early in his career. But I really wasn't surprised about that. He has the length. He has the, the IQ to know where to be out on the court, knowing where to help, knowing where to come out of nowhere to block the guys that's still confident that they can finish around that paint. He also may forces you to play more on the perimeter because of his defense, and that gives Cleveland a lot of more leeway of having Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland not get blown by so much because of 
Evan Mobley cutting off the paint to force you to be a perimeter player offensively, which gives them more chances to be able to get out in transition and get more opportunities because the more you stop your opponent, the more chances you can score, the more chances you can score, the more you can grow that lead and get a comfortable type of finish. But when they have killers like Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell, it don't really matter as much because they're going to step up and make big plays anyway, whether they up by a lot or not because they're closers. And they have the closers, they have the rebounders, they have the athleticism even in the paint, and they have guys that can make shots at that small four power four position on and off the ball. I think that if you want to add that fifth guy, it's definitely Evan Mobley. He just has to continue to develop his offensive game. He doesn't really have a dominant move in the point in the post. He doesn't really have a dominant move in the paint besides catch and from an alley-oop and finish it, but it's rare that that happens because the defense knows how to stop it for the most part and at the NBA level, and most people are just as big and have just as much size as him, so they already prepared for that. Plus, it's in the scouting report, so he's just going to have to find some go-to moves and some moves that he's confident with in taking besides just trying to hurry up and get a guy off guard and try to finish real quick. That's the way he eats right now offensively, so... It's good to have some moves. It's good to be able to make some shots, but he is going to have to learn how to either post up, make a mid-range, make threes consistently, and add a healthy volume of shot attempts because this team needs another spark to be able to be greater. I know that they have gotten better. I know that they have made these decisions to stay young and to grow and develop just to become a team that can be long-lasting, especially when it comes to playoff success and regular season success. They have done it for two years, and they have gotten better over the last two years. Now it's about how do we go all in with development and get the best results and try to put our foot on the gas to be able to win a championship eventually, again, since they have won one in 2016 with LeBron. But... They have been able to put it together faster. They've been able to be more aggressive with trades and even in the draft. They've been more aggressive, and that shows you the the difference. Like, they wasn't really doing this in the 90s. They wasn't really doing it in the 80s. They really wasn't doing it in the 2000s. They they started doing it in the 2010s, and that has went over to the 2020s too and this is what you want to see is either you rebuilding and retooling to become a championship team or you are already a contender do you think what to expect from the cavaliers is what i would say do i think they're a contender yeah because they have everything they need to win they just got to get the the mentality to value possessions make the best out of possessions and make sure they trust in each other and moving the ball a little bit more and trusting that people can make plays outside of Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. And I feel like that's tough to do when they're growing at the same time. But eventually these guys going to play with each other enough to have that respect for each other to be able to trust each other in those big moments. And those are the ones they're going to have to seize the opportunity of being able to win. And then they can possibly win the title. But they're on the right path. They're going in the right direction. I expect them to be a playoff team. I expect them to be top five in the Eastern Conference next year, and that means you have a chance to win the title depending on matchups, depending on injuries, depending on how how luck goes your way because you need a little bit of that sprinkled in if you're trying to win the championship. And they got guys that are big shot makers too. So they don't really need too much. They're not really missing too much. It's just about can their bigs stay healthy? Can they defend at a high level still? Can they score better and add more moves? And then it's about can the perimeter players do more, which is in the power forward position when the backups come in in the small forward position. Can somebody relinquish that role and turn it into a role that they can really become special at? I feel like the biggest link that's weak is the small forward position. But I think Imani Bates is the best guy for that position. And most guys will say he has the most upside, especially at 6'8". Um, and he, he showed that he can do the same thing Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell can do offensively, which is take over a game. So you got three guys can take over and three guys that's cool without the ball that can help guys get easy shots by setting screens and being able to finish in the paint and giving them somebody to pass to, too, so you can still score on that position as a team. I think 
it makes perfect sense to keep this roster the same and just run it back the next two years after this. And since they gave Donovan Mitchell the contract, they're thinking about giving these other guys their contract or they already signed them, for example, which they did for some of these guys. It makes sense that they confident in this core they can actually get it done. And I believe that they won't get it done this year, but as the you know, teams got to continue to cut the talent, teams got to continue to spread the talent, teams ended up, you know, losing some of their depth. Within the next two to three to four years, this team can be right there and have opportunity to win a championship. I just don't see it this year, but I expect them to be great. I expect them to have a good run. I expect them to be decent in the playoffs. I just feel like it's just a couple teams that's just better right now, but I can see them getting worse as they get older. And this team got a couple more years before they even in their 30s. So they'd be right there waiting to say, you got to pass the torch to somebody. You might be passing the torch to Cleveland. You might be passing it to Indiana. You might be passing it to New York. And those are the big three teams in the Eastern Conference besides the Boston Celtics, who still is number one on offense and defense. And that's why they're the best team. While these other teams trying to grow into that, trying to figure that out, and trying to be able to get it done like the Celtics did this year. Other than that, comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you like content just like this, this channel has a bunch of it and I upload every day. I also do NBA tributes and breakdowns of the greatest players and how they change and influence the game. I also have breakdowns of the current players too on this channel. So if you're new to the channel and you missed a lot of content or you haven't seen a lot of content or you subscribe and miss some videos because you was busy or you didn't have the time or you wasn't interested at the time, it is fun to go back and still watch some older videos in your free time. And then you see why the channel is so great and why so many people love it and why I have so many subscribers. Other than that, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for sharing to keep this channel popular. And thanks for being a part of the channel and, and, and helping some form of way. Other than that, I'm gone.